Hello everyone and welcome to the Commando Cast. Andrew here with you as always. So we spent the last 10 days or so completely focused on solo mode on the channel, but I want to get back to talking about real destiny. So there's a hero character pairing slash template slash whatever you want to call it out there that really has me interested and that's what I want to talk about today is Jawa Wookiee Tribe X. <music> Hey guys, thanks for joining me yet again. So let's start off our discussion with the Jawa Junk Dealer. Now, this little dude's been getting quite a bit of press lately, uh, mostly because of the whole 6 wide Jawa Mill thing, which is clearly an archetype that was designed out of this set. Um, but I've been seeing a lot of neat uses. You know, we've seen people use him with Bane and some other stuff, but I've seen some pretty cool uses of this guy lately on some random decks on TTS. And I do have to get a shout out with Jeff James. When I went up to Olympia before this whole COVID thing hit, he did have a Sabine Hera version of this that he was running. Um, and I didn't quite catch on to kind of how powerful it was at the time. So this guy in and of himself, right? What he lets you do, obviously when he comes in, you can play that neutral gray card for one less. Um, and it's kind of fortuitous that I was talking about this this week because earlier this week, uh, my friend Derek, actually Derek from Gonga Games, uh, messaged me and he said, did I miss the memo on something? We just had a surge in Cabo Bright Pistols, he means the Canto Bright Pistol, and Stun Batons. And I said, well, it's gray with Jawa. He said a single quarter order came in for six and another for three back to back. I always assume some video posted highlighting a new deck when I see orders like that. And one very well may have uh, by some of our counterparts that have paywalls that I haven't seen. It's completely possible, but um, I think a lot of people are really starting to catch on with this guy just in basically any deck. So, I mean, and the, so the, the cards I'm showing here, right? I mean, he can, instead of playing just the harmless trick, the dodges, the dives, the stuff like that, that we've seen him pretty much being used for so far, a lot of people are starting to realize that you can drop that Canto Bite for two. You can drop your Electro Sword, your Vibro Sword. One I like a lot is a Grievance Striker. You guys know I like that gun anyway. No pay sides, redeploy, two drop. That becomes a one drop with this guy which is pretty good, right? So now all of a sudden you're not using this guy just for free surprise removal, all of a sudden you're using him for your ramp, which is really very interesting because a lot of people are packing respite to do basically that as it is. And yes, you have a lot less flexibility than it has to be gray neutral, but it's a very interesting angle on the play of this guy. Then the next thing that I've really been seeing the strength of is Wookiee Val Valorous Tribe. And by, by Wookiee, I do mean the Kashyyyk Warrior. I just call him that, just, it just, that's just me. Um, but the Kashyyyk Warrior Valor Tribe, right, aside from the fact that this guy is a base 8 or a cost 8 with a health 10, Valor's Tribe is really good and might be too good, to be honest with you. I, I personally think it's a little too good with the way it lets you spread around the damage. Um, because, you know, think about it, right? Palpatine Watto, one of the great strengths of that deck was the ability to use Dangerous Maneuver to just kind of, it, it's an effective healing, right? You're pulling it off your target. So that's what Valor's Tribe does, is it lets you spread it around. You then have access to the card Run, with, run to Safety, which you, if you're playing the right deck, you can set up Run to Safety a lot easier moving it around. Plus you get that one free heal. And remember, for value of one, that puts this in the profitable camp, right? So um, what I've started to see with some games on TDS is people who are pairing these together. Um, and again, I have to give another shout out to Jeff. One of those was his, but I have seen other people on TTS playing this as well. So that leads me to talk about this deck archetype today, which I want to focus on, which is Jawa, Kashyyyk Warrior, or Wookiee Tribe, plus 14 points left over for your X. Right, so what's what's neat about this pairing, and I'll go through some guys that fit in a second, but what's really neat about this pairing is it lets you use kind of a featured card or kind of a featured character that you wouldn't normally put a lot of stake in because they're kind of soft and they might die, right? That 14 points kind of a tricky area. Um, well, let's go ahead and into it, right? So. You have guys like Luke, right? Luke is super amazing. The guy spits out damage like it's his job, but he only has 10 health, right? He's pretty soft. Take a Cassian, right? Cassian is amazing. Anything he resolves is good. And then you hit the indirect, but again, he only has 10 health. So he's kind of in that problem. But now if you can not only move two damage per turn off of him, but you can also heal, um, you start to get into a really cool range where you can kind of take advantage of these characters, which we normally wouldn't have been able to use in kind of like the prime slot and we can now do that. i mean the closest we ever got with cassian was like cassian uh nabu guard times two 
which was kind of a cool little deck. It just didn't quite work. Um, but now you can take kind of all the goodness of that deck and use it in, you know, the Wookiee. He can move the, the Jawa junk, junk dealer, right? If they go for the junk dealer to turn off your ramp engine, then he was just a five point meat sack. And if they don't, then you can still move up to over, over stuff to him with tribe and use it as a meat sack. So there's a lot of really good uh, things with this little combination. And just to be clear, it doesn't have to be a 14 point character. It could be 13, could be 12, but remember you are using a plot. So you're not getting a lot out of it. Um, you could also go the route where you're using two, two mids, right? And play the Wookiee elite or something like that if you wanted to. Uh, so, but what I have up here, I have uh, Luke, which we already talked about in Cassian. Another one which is very interesting here is Plo Koon, right? Plo Koon, you would uh, pick up the Wookiee's ability as well. So when Plo had, because you remember you're running him elite here. So when Plo would have uh, six damage on him, each of his dice would hit for plus one. Uh, that's not bad. Um, and then the one that I'm very interested in, just because it's paired melee sides, and again, I realize that Zeb can be resolved as guns, but the Wookiee has the melee sides. Uh, I like the look of Zeb because he has that 12 health, right? So you're bringing a lot of health to the table. You're bringing damage sides to the table that work. Um, it's not super aggro, right? I guess it's more of like a mid-range deck, but um, you're, you're, you're doing a lot there. Now you're on the three die. I get it. So there's a disadvantage there, but you've got the ramp going for you. You definitely have the survivability. And I think it's something to look at. So let's go into some of the pairing, right? And this, this I'll give credit. This is the one I saw Jeff playing, which is the junk dealer, the warrior, and then Luke obviously with tribe in there this uh you know you're dropping the merchant freighter he was dropping we well, yeah so he, he was using the merchant freighter to drop vehicles and stuff like that but then you can turn on inject with merchant freighter and luke just spits out damage his ship just spits out damage and before you know it he's just dishing out damage that you can't take anymore and if you go for the junk dealer first again luke's fine if you go for luke first he keeps healing him on you it's a rough little thing to deal with when he's spitting out that much damage uh, the next one, which I've been playing around with a bit uh, lately, is the Cassian version. This was kind of something I was attracted to really just because all of Cassian's dice are good no matter what you resolve. Um, I do, one thing I didn't note before is I, in that list, I'll, I'll put it up again, right? That list of characters, I didn't put any red characters in there. The reason is, I think, remember the job was gray, right? So you have red with the Wookiee. So if you're pairing him with like another, I don't know, let's just say Tarful, right? Pairing with Tarful, you're running a mono deck. So I think you want to run, I mean, blue and yellow, I think out of the two, you probably want to run blue if you can. It just gives you access to so much zero cost removal on the blue side. The red blue package is amazing. Uh, but then again, you have pickings and all the stuff like that because you can keep that yellow guy alive for that spot yellow. So you have the good yellow package on. So obviously, you know, at this point, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of rambling, but I hope I've driven my point home here that I think there's a lot of really cool options using those two main characters as a template. Um, so like I said, the Zeb one, I'm really excited about. So what I went ahead and did was put together just a real cursor, real dirty uh, list here using Zeb. So we're on the battlefield comm tower. It's because we do have a plot. Most people are running some sort of plot these days, so it doesn't necessarily directly help us, uh, but it can if we get it. We're probably also not gonna win our battlefield because we're only starting with three dice. So for upgrades, I have one Electro Sword. I have two Ewok Bows. I like that in this because again, it's a one drop that brings pretty good value to the table. Usually I don't like using it because it doesn't have redeploy, but your survivability in this deck is really high. So you can throw it onto Zeb and it's gonna be very hard for them to get that one drop off and lose that value before you can upgrade it or override it, I mean. I have one Grievance Striker. I have two Quicksilvers, basically for the same argument as the Ewok Bow. I really like that. No leader here, but still has really good sides. I do prefer it over the Sun Baton. Sun Baton with its two sides, I just don't like as well. I do realize I can play for one less with the Jawa, but you have other stuff in here that you can do that with. I do have two Riot Shields, that's for the Wookiee. He is a trooper, and then two Vibro Swords. I have two Improvised Explosive, because if I'm playing yellow these days, I'm putting that in. Then I have two Merchant Freighters for extra money. As far as the event packets go, I have two pickings, two feet of strength, two field medics. Do you remember we'll have two uh, characters with 10 points here for feet of strength, or with 10 health here for feet of strength. Two field medics, two harmless tricks, that's just for the Jawa. Two into the garbage chutes. Just a reminder, ladies and gentlemen, you cannot play into the garbage chute with the Jawa. You have to basically, you have to, besides, it's gratifying to throw the Jawa into the, into the garbage chute anyway, right? But that is a hero card and it does not work with him for the cost reduction. Then have Loth, Cat, and Mouse, a great addition of the set for hero. Measure for measure, that Wookiee is a trooper. And then two rendezvous for the three uh, pay side resolve. 
So again, it's nothing super tech, nothing super sexy in this list, but I think it's a very functional list, right? And it can kind of serve as a going off point for anything else you want to do with this list, right? You'd throw with this pairing, I mean, you'd throw the yellow out, throw in some blue cards, depending on who you're playing with. Uh, you know, if you're playing Plo, you can throw in your daggers, your Ezra's. If you're going with Luke, you'd throw in the ships and stuff like that. So um, another um, one, which I had actually alluded to earlier, you could try and play this with some version. Like, you know, you could, if you wanted to, run the Wookiee Elite because the Jawas, the Jawas 5, the Plots 3, you could run the Wookiee Elite and run like a Chopper if you wanted to and kind of go like a four dice start there. Uh, this is a deck that Jeff was running as he was running Jawa, Hera, and Sabine out of the new set for some piloting stuff. Uh, I cannot remember without going back and looking if he was playing AR or not. If you're playing AR, you just still only get a three-day start. You take it away from one of the two. Um, but yeah, so again, this uh, Jawa Wookiee Tribe X. Jawa Wookiee Tribe 14X pairing, I think, um, is kind of a cool uh, template for building a lot of very different hero decks, and it can help us showcase a lot of heroes that we uh, haven't seen. Um, before we get out of here, I do want to do a note. I was kind of going through and trying to figure out the Jawa from the villain side. Um, and specifically, I was looking at uh, Afra because he can bring, again, he's, it's for the meat sack thing, right? Because the villains don't have Valor's Tribe, they don't get the movement of the damage as much. So he doesn't become, he being the Jawa, doesn't become quite as advantageous. But I figured, you know who moves damage around is Afra, right? That's what she does. So I was trying to explore a lot of options with Afra, and I was like, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to drop the assassin droid. Can't. He's a villain, right? So, because uh, with Afra and then Jawa, it would have been a one-cost assassin droid. Can't do that. Uh, so that was that was dead in the water. But um, I do think someone smarter than me might be able to come up with a really cool Afra list because of the whole meat sack moving stuff around idea of it. So I'd be very interested to see what somebody can get there. Um, the points make it really rough, and I think you're probably running some like weird double down version to get the gray cards that you want. But I don't know. I'd be very interested to see uh, or hear what you guys can come up with, uh, not only on the hero side, but if there's any really cool villain sides of stuff from just aside from just the big little that everybody's been playing, um, which is completely reasonable. So anyway, that's all I have to say today. Um, again, I want to thank everybody for continuous to, continuing to join us during the shutdown. And if nothing else, go Commando. In partnership with We Tabletop, the event directory for tabletop gamers.